Hello, I'm Toy Cat, and welcome back to my second channel video. Today is obviously a very bad one to be living right here, and the reason for that, if somehow you're not aware, is that Russia has extended their invasion of Ukraine from just the separatist regions to now including the rest of the country. They have launched a military assault on major military targets near big cities, including the airport in Kiev, the capital. Which is very wild, to put it in Ukraine's own words, Putin has launched a full-scale invasion of Ukraine. And this is something that is very scary, and especially from the outside, if you're not familiar with the Ukraine tensions and the escalation, why exactly are two of Europe's largest countries in what uh, involved in what seems to be some form of war? And the good news for you, internet, is that I have done the research so you don't have to, and uh, I went straight to the, the horse's mouth for this one, and according to Putin himself, the Russian leader just said that the special military operation, don't worry, non-invasion, it's a special military operation that just involves sending troops into another country, uh, is, is only happening because Ukraine's democratically elected government has been responsible for eight years of genocide. He then just says that the goal was to demilitarize and denazify Ukraine. In other words, uh, you know, the only reason we're sending troops in is because they're literally Nazis committing genocide and we want to stop that. We're the good guys, don't worry, you can thank us later, but we are stopping that whole genocide thing happening in Ukraine. And you might be saying, wait, I hadn't heard about Nazis or genocide in Ukraine, and you know what? I hadn't either, but clearly we're not as well plugged into the news as Mr. Putin here. And so that is the open shut case. End of story. We can uh, go about our days now. We've solved the issue. Except, you know, just to be thorough, I decided I would look into seeing what Ukraine said, because that does sound very one-sided, doesn't it? And uh, according to Ukraine, uh, we went to their Twitter, of course, because the way 2022 diplomacy works is you post memes on Twitter. According to Ukraine, uh, Russia and Putin is actually just being that 1939 genocide man from Germany. And uh, it looks very interesting when you hear their side of the story, like, oh, maybe it's not Ukraine that are the the 1939 bad man. Maybe it's Russia uh, that is actually the same. Ooh, that's, this is very hard to say. And you might be thinking to yourself, like, well, that's a bit of a stretch, Toy Cat. By the way, this is where the bombings are being held. Uh, but actually, a uh, direct quote from the former president is comparing Putin to being a modern-day Hitler. And so when you hear that, it's like, okay, what's the scoop here? What's, what's actually happening? Both sides are calling each other Nazis, like it's an internet forum debate that's got a bit too heated. But they're both clearly trying to make the comparison that the other are just as bad as the last time that a war and invasion was justified. Even though Russia is still trying to say that it's not, uh, you know, like, a, it's, it's, it's not a, it's not a war, it's not an invasion, we're just, um, what they claim is they're not even gonna occupy Ukraine. They just, they just wanna, you know, like, do some special operations there, which is very <laughs> non-specific, I would say. Uh, but clearly we need to make the comparison between what is happening now and World War II, just to maybe ease some nerves, if nothing else, because the direct comparison is that, well, Russia is looking at Ukraine and saying, we'd like to take a little nibble, you know, we'd like to have some of that territory for ourselves, even if they're claiming they're not gonna occupy Ukraine, just like, uh, you know, obviously, uh, Germany did with Czechoslovakia in 1938. They were like, hey, you know what? There's some Germans living in your country that we think should belong to us. And hey, rest of the world, don't intervene. And if you don't intervene, we'll be friends forever and we can cause peace in Europe. It's called appeasement. It's obviously one of the big mistakes looking back about, uh, you know, the prelude to World War II, because eventually they did just invade Poland and but whatever, the whole thing happened. However, uh, and obviously the direct comparison is that, well, if you look at, uh, you know, Ukraine, a lot of their population speaks Russian and has ethnic Russian uh, roots in a lot of cases. Um, a lot of the population is ethnically Russian. And uh, as a result, like, well, it's the same comparison, right? Well, you know, Russia just wants to have their own people back. And once they get their own people back, they're not going to be done. They're going to say, just like Germany did and what led to you know, this whole crazy thing, they're gonna say, actually, we want some more. Who's gonna be next after, uh, you know, Russia gobbles up some of, uh, you know, Ukraine? Who are they coming for next? I think the obvious answers are like Georgia, is a, is a key one. Uh, maybe they go for the Baltics. What's what's going to happen after that? And then after they've taken another nibble, maybe they'll go for, you know, like Belarus, which they've effectively already done with the puppet state. Maybe they go for Poland, you know? And once they've gone for Poland, and you just keep going until they hit a country that you care about, once they've gone for Poland, they go for Germany. Oh, you don't care about Germany? Maybe they'll go for France. You don't care about France? Maybe they'll go for Ireland. You, you don't care about Ireland? Maybe they'll go for New York. There we go. That's just, oh, you still don't care about New York? Fine, they'll go for your home state eventually, or your hometown, or city, wherever the world you live. Maybe they'll come for Australia one day, and that is why we've got to stop them right now. And uh, I, I do think that that's a little bit of an exaggeration. However, I do think this is very dire for international relations anyway. And why 
Uh, do, why do I think that? Besides, I mean, it goes without saying that, like, an actual invasion of one country by another is tragic on any level because of the loss of life. There are going to be uh, innocent lives on both sides, probably more heavily on one side than the other, that are just lost uh, because of what their leaders want. This this man, and uh, indeed... By the way, just as a fun... I, you know, this is a, an aside, but this is how I do videos. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you, if you want a more smoothly flowing video, but that's not what we do here on this channel. As an aside, they accuse um, Ukraine of being Nazis, right? But the president of Ukraine is actually Jewish. I, I decided to confirm this one because the president of Ukraine is one of my favorite figures in the world, and I'll explain why. But he is, in fact, Jewish. He was born to Jewish parents in uh, 1978. He's actually pretty young, right? But the interesting thing about, uh, you know, Mr... Uh, Zelensky is he actually is became the president of Ukraine. He came from a Russian-speaking region. Blah blah blah. He became the president of Ukraine by playing the role of a president of Ukraine. Um, that actually like a comedian that became the president. But he is a comedian that then ran for a political <laughs> ran for office using a political party bearing the same name as the TV show, and then actually got elected as Ukrainian president. Like you know, people make the joke that like, oh, Trump Trump is a joke. He's like a you know he's a a celebrity that just ran for the presidency and that's kind of crazy by itself but this is literally a comedian who like made a show and like manifested being becoming president into existence and so it's fascinating he's been doing a lot of things about uh you know being in government and you know it's it, there's there's so much you can dive into about this guy and i just find him to be one of the most fascinating political figures and it sucks to be probably him right now because how do you manage a country that is being invaded by another one I genuinely don't know. So, um, yeah, the, the reason, by the way, that this is all happening, because obviously, when you dive into it, they both just say the other guy is being a Nazi. What's the actual reason that Russia is in Ukraine? And uh, the, the, the long story short is that Russia said, very plainly, um, like, hey, all you gotta do is declare that Ukraine can't join NATO, and we'll be good. We don't want NATO to be at our border, because we see it as an aggressive alliance. Um, and uh, if you don't know, NATO is an organization that all pledges to any attack on any one country in NATO is an attack on all of them. It's kind of like, actually, funnily enough, the alliances that led to World War II and World War I are coming off. Anyway, so uh, Ukraine wanted to join NATO, so they had security from something like this happening. Um, and Russia said, hey, if you want security from us invading you, then you know what we're going to do? We're going to invade you. And so, uh, yeah, that's it's, it's, it's kind of a sad thing. The Ukraine did say everyone, like, hey, please, 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 please. And um, yeah, as, uh, the, the sad thing about this is that, yeah, Ukraine is now being invaded because they wanted to join an alliance, which would help them avoid being invaded. <laughs> Again, it's, it's it's a funny little... Which, you know, to me, in indicates that maybe, you know, if even if they had signed the agreement, maybe this would have happened this way anyway. But what's actually going to happen about it? Because you can't just... Uh, you know, if you are uh, any major country in the world, but obviously people lean towards the US as being the, the default world policeman or whatever, uh, if you're any country in the world, how are you just going to let Russia invade Ukraine and get away with it? The reason that this is even a question, because there's two sides of this. One side says... If you're the world police, you step in and you do what's right everywhere. If Russia is invading Ukraine, you go in there and you step in. And ignoring that Putin has directly said that if the world does anything, um, he, he literally said, uh, Moscow's response would be instant if anyone tried to stop their action, basically threatening whoever comes in there. And also, Russia has nukes, so you can't really stop them invading someone if you want them to, unless you're willing to uh, you know, risk yourself. And so that's there's one argument that says, like, you should go in and there and do something, ignoring the downside consequences. The other argument is like, wait, if you're America or you're the UK or you're Australia, why do you care about Ukraine again? Like, obviously, sucks for the people. Wow, I do care about those those Ukrainians, but you know, we know it's not our country, is it? It's not not our duty to defend there. And so the reason that the second argument is less important, and the reason every country is not leaning towards that, if you look at a should we, should we read up on what's happening? Um, here's, here's some fun direct quotes. The, uh, the German government spokesperson said that um, we have a land war in Europe we thought was only uh, to find in history books a flagrant breach of international law. The UK president, uh, sorry, prime minister, no, we definitely have a, a, a president, Boris Johnson, says that he was appalled by the unprovoked attack and that Britain would respond decisively. Italy says that the attack action was unjustified and unjustifiable. And then uh, Poland says that time needs to be, It's now it's the time to reinforce NATO's eastern flank, basically saying, hey, you know how NATO, our whole thing is like keeping us all safe? Have you noticed how suspiciously unsafe we are now that Russia is uh, getting closer and closer uh, to our eastern flank, which is over here and over here in particular? I guess you could also argue over here. Anyway, so, um, yeah, here, here's the deal. Um, 
to to kind of uh, go back up a level on this one. The world looks at this and they say, we can't really let that happen. And the world is preparing sanctions as a result. And the mo major reason why is because if you say to Russia, you can just invade another sovereign country, you're basically saying that even though international law says that you should not invade a country and blah, 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 um, it looks like you can just get away with it. And the reason that's bad is because who's to say that China can't just have Taiwan? Who's to say that North Korea can't just invade South Korea? Um, I mean, like, probably wouldn't go well for them. I guess they've got the nukes, so, I mean, as long as they're not being defended, they're fine. Who's to say that Australia can't just invade New Zealand? I mean, they, we know they've been trying to do it, but, um, <laughs> you know, like, that that's the whole point. Like, obviously, uh, un unlike Australia and New Zealand, uh, China invading Taiwan would be a disaster because of all the manufacturing that happens there. Um, you know, North Korea invading South Korea, at the very least, even if you don't care about the people of South Korea, the, the hit to the world economy, that's not good. Um, and so as a result, Russia invading, uh, you know, friendly countries would also be bad. It would signal that you can do what you want and it could signal the start of a World War Three. And so how, how do we prevent this? And the answer is now that we're in the middle of it, I think it's gonna be just really, really, really intense sanctions. But the problem with that, the problem of just having a massive pack, uh, pack of sanctions, you know, economic harm being caused to Russia is like, well, we didn't, didn't you guys literally try that in 2014 as a response to Crimea? Um, you know, this was a illegal referendum. Again, they probably would have voted um, to join Russia, even in a legal referendum. But it was an illegal referendum conducted in another country's territory to get a part of what was then Ukraine to join Russia. And I'm sure this was like a slightly different thing because it used to be part of Russia before it was part of Ukraine. But like the world was like, ah, this is bad. What we're going to do is we're going to commit some sanctions on you. And you know what? How much has Russia really cared in the time since then? I would say not too much. Russia is going to take some significant chunk of territory from Ukraine, or maybe they're going to, you know, like install a puppet government in Ukraine. Who knows what they're going to do, but they're going to get some significant gain that they should not legally be able to because they're using guns and bombs and military and whatever to achieve it. And so um, the, the question here is like, well, that's not okay, is it? You're basically signaling to the world you can do it, you know, not, instead of there being a system of international rules that we've got to follow and this and that, you're just saying that might makes right and that if you have the guns and the bombs, you can do what you want, which, bad message to be sending in the modern age. Although, I, I was thinking about it, right? Like, how can you use this to your own advantage? Because obviously, Russia looks at that, you know, China looks at this and they go, huh, Russia just invaded Ukraine and nothing happened. Well, given that Russia doesn't even really see Ukraine as part of them, but we do see this part of East China as being a part of China, uh, maybe maybe we go in and we evade while no one's looking. And I was thinking, you know what? If you're the US, that'd be the power move, right? Just invade a part of a, a place that is like, you know, like that you've wanted to for a while but couldn't really get away with. Just be like, ooh, got some bad news, Russia. Georgia is a part of us now. You know what? We, it's the 50, it's the 50th state. We, uh, we've expanded Georgia to include all of the rightful Georgian territory and do something fun like that. But obviously, yeah, very, very tragic. I feel like we have to say a million times here that this is bad. It doesn't get any better because we say this is bad and we talk about the human cost, but there is a huge human cost and it's gonna be tragic and really bad for everyone involved. However, let's talk about the interesting thing here because obviously looking into like World War II borders and how like, oh yeah, a lot of Europe got really significantly redrawn there and maybe we're gonna witness some, some portion of that happening now. I think the much more interesting thing here is like, wait, so Russia is breaking international law right now, right? Uh, according to everyone but Putin, who says, we're just, we're getting rid of the Nazis. We, we're the good guys here. Uh, everyone besides Putin is saying, uh, is, is saying that they have committed some vagrant, uh, very, very blatant uh, breaches of um, international law. And so what's the deal with that? And I wanted to talk about an interesting theory um, because international law is the highest level of law in the world, right? Like when you commit crimes against humanity, you try that in an international court. You try that in a, you know, there's like a level of, um, you know, thing for that because that's how we need to do things. However, international law doesn't really exist. In the, in the same way that we have laws that govern a country, I can't ride an e-scooter uh, in my country because it's against the law. It breaches the Horse and Carriage Act of 1938, 1838 even. So if I want to ride my, if I want to uh, hop on this road with an electric scooter, I cannot do so. There is a supreme right. If I ride my scooter, eventually a man with some force shows up and stops me. And even even if they don't, eventually a court can take me and they can get damages from me, etc, etc, etc. However, when it comes to international law, because there's no higher arbiter, you know, because even no matter how bad a thing you do, there is some level of 
force within a country that can stop you. There's no international arbiter for it. And so an interesting theory that I've been reading in, uh, like, it's always been true, but it's like something I've been reading more into, is the idea that, like, in the international sense of the word, we really do have anarcho- <laughs> whatever form of government you want you know like we we have anarchy we don't have a uh you know like some grand power that says "Ooh, you've done a bad thing russia we're gonna we're gonna you know put you back where you need to be there's no higher power to stop that and so really we do live in a world of just pure anarchy right and so this this is very interesting you might say that like okay how do we prevent this happening again how do we prevent um Countries like Russia being able to bulldoze their neighbors. Because if they wanted to, they could just have Kazakhstan. If they wanted to, they could just have Georgia. In fact, if they... I, I, I don't have to say if they wanted to. They've been slowly... Um, I've wanted to make a video of this for a while. Russia just moves the border with Georgia forwards a couple of meters every year. They, It's, it's not very much that they're taking... But, like, you know, Russia kind of does just take what they want because, oh, what are you going to do, Georgia? You're not the U.S. state yet. And um, as a result, the only way to prevent stuff like this is if we have a world federal government. This is a movement that formed, particularly in the 1930s and 40s. The United Nations, when it was first formed, one of the big goals they had was to make a world federal government. In the same way that how do you prevent states from going to war to each other? How do you prevent European countries from going to war to each other? A higher up government, the EU. You know, good, good luck trying to invade France this time, Germany. Um, and so how do you do that with the world? Every single nation on earth signs up to a higher federal power and there is some world government that controls everything which i know sounds a lot like a conspiracy theory in fact it's not even uh, like it sounds like a conspiracy theory it is it's <laughs> like you, you know you're on a good wikipedia page when it's filled with uh you know warnings and blah blah blah, blah. but um yeah the idea of there being a uh, a world federal government is the only real solution here but the reality is, is even though a lot of people advocate for this is the cost too high uh, in fact, by the way, look at this. Uh, Winston Churchill is one of the advocates. Is one of the craziest things. Include Martin Luther King Jr. You know, not often you find these three guys on the same list. Albert Einstein too, huh? You know what? Are you smarter than Albert Einstein? If you're against a, a, a world federal government, then uh, clearly you think you are. But no, more seriously, um, this is an inevitability. And unless you use your force anyway and you say, hey, we're going to enforce international law even though we're not the international policeman. And that's why I find... You know, like, uh, I, I think one of the big struggles in the world is I, my, my, my controversial stance is you should probably never breach international law and probably never be invading other countries. I think, I think that killing other people's country's citizens is extra wrong. I think killing is, or, you know, again, I, I'm sorry to be such a hippie. I think murder is bad. You know, I'm sorry. I, coming out as a, a vagrant, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, like, even though I think murder is bad already, I think murdering someone else's, else's citizens is an extra level of bad, right? And then the highest level of bad is, like, going in there and systemically killing a whole bunch just because... Of... And so uh, I, I obviously think that, like, well, uh, how do you prevent that then? And, I, you know, the ideal is no one says that, like, having a world police is... It's like a, a thing you say... But this, this is the time where you say, well, having a US that leads the world actually has some benefits... But then you, then you look at it and they go, oh, what we're going to do is, um, you know, let's, let's read it. Joe Biden vows that the world will hold Russia accountable, predicting major loss of life. Well, uh, they're holding him accountable real well, I imagine. Oh, my stocks are down 2.7%. You know what, Russia, you, I, I was fine with the murder, but now that you've hit my, my capital allocation, I am significantly uh, more upset. But no, more seriously, this is, this is bad. These are just some ramblings of a madman. Is World War Free starting? No. But I mean, like, theoretically it could start. I don't think people in uh, 1938 Europe, when they gave some of Czechoslovakia to Germany for, oh, you know, this is just a one-time thing. There aren't Germans living in Poland. They can't invade, I mean, actually there were, but they're, you know, they're not just going to invade Poland. You know, they, they can't just invade Russia or France. There's no, there's no pretense for that. But, um, you guys familiar with that, with that guy? You know, the guy on the left here? He did it anyway. He did it anyway. Who's to say the guy on the right won't do it too? And, like, I guess, like, probability and statistics and all the facts I just mentioned. But, who knows for sure? Maybe Russia is bent on world domination. Just probably not. It, it, in the modern age, I feel like most countries just want more control over their sphere of the planet. You know, we, we only had a world war because of how intensely... You know, actually, you know, this this is my controversial stance right here. I, uh, and this, this is where, like, I am going well beyond the realm of talking facts. This is just opinion here. This whole video is pretty bad, low quality anyway, don't worry. But I think that 
if we really take your current mindset back to Germany in 1939, if you don't know about the atrocities happening in the camps there, which like, you know, like, let's just assume you don't. And Germany's just like, yeah, we want to take over 50% of mainland Europe. Most of the world is fine if they do, right? Like, obviously, European countries, if you're Polish, well, goodbye again. Uh, and like, oh, there's, there's a lot of countries that are like, wait, 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 we're not okay with that. But I think most of the world would go, well, it's better than, you know, sending tens of millions of people to die, you know, having a reorganization of the, the states happening over there. And I think that, um, I think that's the sad thing. I think we're making the same call that we would have made then. But actually, is it the bad call if the alternative is a war? And especially if the alternative is a nuclear war. And who knows for sure? I'll, I'll, we'll keep following the situation. I imagine the end result will not be good for Ukraine. And that is the sad bit, isn't it? Anyway, thank you for watching. Second channel. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Give me, give me money. Yeah, that's all. Just don't even have a place to do it. This video is sponsored um, by um, apples, like the, the fruit. Go buy an apple from a store right now and you'll, you'll get some good fiber intake. Um, and uh, then go to my Patreon and give me three dollars so I can I can make a get a get a lobster roll going. It's been so long since I had a lobster roll. I'm just saying. Anyway, um, yeah, this this is bad, huh? This is real bad. I guess I'll see you all in the next one, unless I don't, huh? Bye.